Solo Sokoa was just stripped of his title, so we'll take a look at what's going on there. We'll also take a look at some more fan theories for Bray Wyatt's new Wyatt family, and much more. Let's start things off with a questionable decision and storyline coming out of NXT. Solo Sokoa made his main roster debut by instantly playing a massive role in Roman Reigns' story. He single-handedly saved Roman's title reign and instantly joined the bloodline. Then only a few days later, Solo would return to NXT to capture the North American title. And fans were digging this move because now, Solo Sokoa had his own world title to hold up with the rest of the bloodline members on SmackDown. Plus, it'll keep things even more interesting and have a bloodline member as a champion for NXT. Solo's title was even defended on SmackDown a few days after he first won it. So, it was an exciting time and fans were all trying to guess what WWE was going for here, with Solo Sokoa bringing the title to SmackDown. Was the North American title getting a little main roster call-up itself, or how was this all going to work? Well, it turns out that Solo Sokoa's reign as North American champion was a bit shorter than we expected. He only held the title for seven days and was immediately stripped of the title on the following episode of NXT. Shawn Michaels said that Solo Sokoa wasn't sanctioned to compete on NXT that night. Therefore, it's as if the match never happened. So, he's no longer champion. Fans were instantly stunned and confused, just wondering what even was the purpose of Solo Sokoa holding the title for seven days. What was the purpose of dethroning the current champion only to have Solo Sokoa have a seven-day title reign that didn't really count in the history books? Those questions are nearly impossible to answer. This was a decision that didn't make much sense at all, at least in this current moment, and it's very hard to explain. But as usual, there are some fan theories and guesses for the purpose of Solo's short reign. Some fans think it was for the Crown Jewel press conference that WWE just wanted to have all the Bloodline members at this conference with all the gold. Other fans think that the purpose was to show fans that are unfamiliar with Solo Sokoa just how dominant he can be. He made his first SmackDown appearance with no gold, but then the very next week on SmackDown, he was holding a world title on the show. So fans think that maybe they made him champion for a week to establish Solo Sokoa's abilities to the casual fans and to let them know that he's just as capable as Roman Reigns and the Usos. Some fans are looking at it as even foreshadowing with what could happen potentially to Roman Reigns with the idea of him being stripped of the WWE title. And that's probably the best fan guess that's out there right now. Maybe the real reason will come out in a report in the coming days, but maybe it was just done to briefly establish Solo Sokoa as a champion on the fly. It starts building his stat sheet up as a former champ, and maybe more will come after that. Maybe the bloodline is upset with the unfair stripping of Solo Sokoa, and maybe they'll try to get him an intercontinental title to make up for it. Maybe it could very well lead to Solo Sokoa versus Gunther for that title. Gunther has been an impactful streak in recent weeks, but so is Solo Sokoa, and he was just stripped of the title. So maybe that could set up a hard-hitting fight right there. If Solo is able to dethrone him, that would be even bigger than the North American title. There's even some more bizarre fan theories out there that wonder if Solo could eventually team up with Sami Zayn to take on his brothers, the Usos. So, there's a lot of crazy theories out there for Solo Sokoa's direction. We just have to wait and see which way they decide to take him in. With the rumors of Bray Wyatt's return being on the way, the fan theories and ideas for his new story is starting to pour in. Like we discussed during the first few White Rabbit breakdowns, the logo of the hourglass and the red circle just seem to hint at the idea of a Karrion Cross and Bray Wyatt alliance. But there's been some fans that have taken that idea and have run even further with it, suggesting a whole new possible Wyatt family. Now, the original Wyatt family is iconic and legendary. There's no replacing them or even coming close to what they were. But what if Bray Wyatt, being the manipulative cult leader that his character has always been, decides to get another group of individuals together and lead them? 
This hypothetical group would include Bray Wyatt, Alexa Bliss, Karrion Cross, Scarlett, and Dexter Loomis. Now, ever since Dexter Loomis returned, the general fan belief was that he was just playing a small part in a much bigger operation. An idea that Dexter Loomis isn't calling his own shots, but instead taking commands from a much bigger top boss, someone potentially like Bray Wyatt. Then there was even the connection with The Miz. Bray Wyatt and The Miz have the same fair share of issues over the years. So, was it Wyatt's command for Dexter to harass The Miz and go after him? Dexter's character is great and intriguing, but the issue with him is that he's not going to speak. So, it's a little bit of a challenge when it comes to his story because he's not going to verbally say anything. He's not going to explain his actions. But if you throw him into a faction, led by a great talker like Bray Wyatt, then Dexter doesn't even have to say a single word. Bray will handle the speaking for him and explain what's happening. All Dexter has to do is follow up with the orders from Bray. So that's a fan theory that actually works. Then with Karrion Cross and Scarlet, same sort of thing. The way that they act and present themselves does give off Bray Wyatt vibes. So what if Bray does embrace them and invite them to join him? Maybe Bray sees a lot of similarities there and thinks that they'll make great soldiers for him. And with Alexa Bliss, well, that's pretty much self-explanatory. Alexa Bliss was the only person that Bray Wyatt got really close to ever since the Wyatt family disbanded. Sure, Bray has had a few tag teams with Matt Hardy and Randy Orton, but those tag teams were nothing like Bray and Alexa. They clicked. They matched each other's energy, and they truly were WWE's version of Joker and Harley Quinn. However, you can't ignore the elephant in the room. Last time Bray and Alexa shared a ring, Alexa brutally betrayed him. But instead of taking the revenge route, maybe Bray just offers Alexa his forgiveness and welcomes her back with open arms. So now, you would have Bray Wyatt basically as a general with this entire army of Karrion Cross, Dexter, Scarlet, and Alexa Bliss all at his disposal. He can just hit you up in the women's division, he can hit you up in the men's division. Just having all these men and women that will listen to his every order is pretty scary for the rest of the roster. And before you can even get to Bray, you gotta get through all these soldiers. So Bray is at this top position, and it also gives all these other superstars something to do and play a big role in his story. It would be a really nice twist too, because Everyone expects Bray Wyatt to come back on his own and start new. But what if the big reveal was that Dexter, Karrion Cross, Scarlet, and Alexa were already working for him this entire time? Dexter and Cross both returned in early August. So what if Bray's big plan has been unfolding since August, but no one was aware or paying attention? It would be a big mind-blowing reveal. But either way, as long as the White Rabbit is related to Bray Wyatt, It'll be interesting to watch play out. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.